So I'm here with a Marie Reynolds who does wonderful skin products, treatments. She knows more about the body than I think anybody else that I know, that the skin and, and how it all works and comes together. But Marie also formulated something else. Um, a technique that she made up called the non-emotional contract. And I wanted her to explain, she started giving it to clients and it was to help with anxiety and insomnia. And what exactly is it? And, and what does it do? And why did you start it? Tell us about this non-emotional contract. Well, it's something that I created many, many years ago. I obviously do lots of uh, therapy in my clinic. One of the treatments I used to do um, was something called the spinal code, which is a very powerful um, treatment, actually. And it involves a lot of it's mindfulness meditation. But with the mindfulness meditation, I can actually feel through pulse points in the toes where a person may be blocked or where energy levels peak. Um, and so with the non-emotional contract, it's easier to really just, I suppose, explain that when we're anxious or when we feel overwhelmed, it's a little bit like mentally we're spinning plates. Well, when you feel overwhelmed, it's like people are coming at you in all different directions, giving you piles of plates to spin. And you just literally feel this is just too much. Yes. yes. It's, it's called the non-emotional contract. Now it's not bad to have emotion, of course, but when we have emotions like fear, anxiety, feeling responsible, feeling obligated, uh, having duties to do X, Y, and Z, then we're locked in and we can't, tend to make decisions in a logical manner yes and especially when we're dealing with family business is one thing because we have financial obligations we have bills to pay we have this to do we have that to do we have got to be there at a certain time but when we're talking about family then we have attachments to guilt and obligation and responsibility yeah that the mainly make our decisions for us so the non-emotional contract is basically you get a book and what I tell my clients is that you buy a beautiful book spend a bit of money on a really lovely notebook and keep it by your bed now when you're feeling overwhelmed obviously it affects your anxiety it affects your stress levels it affects your sleep le levels so all of these will impact as well with the non-emotional contract so basically what you do is you say, right, OK, what are the things that are bothering me right at the moment? Who are the people that I'm more concerned with or worried about or whatever it is? And you will write just a page. It's really important to not journal how you're feeling. Right. So what this is the is, difference? This what is, is difference difference from journaling. So journaling is about yeah. writing your feelings down. Right. We don't want that. No. What we want is a logical plan. So imagine yourself as a third person where you have to manage certain people. Right. right? So let's just say, okay, for this person, these are the things that I'm concerned about, whether it's doing things for them or if they've said things negative to you that's caused you stress and anxiety, whatever it is, you just write in one sentence what it is and then you write a bullet point. You think, right, okay, am I in control of this? Can I do something about it? If you're not in control of it, if you're not in control of their behavior, you get a big pen and you cross it off. That is not your circus, so they're not your monkeys, right? right. You offload that. But if it's something that you can control, you think, well, how am I going? What are the steps that I can do to achieve that? And you literally write three to five steps in what you're going to do. So that is a logical plan. And you offload that. And every night you think, right, OK, what are the things that I need to do tomorrow? What are the things that I want to achieve tomorrow? And you just target those things. It's the same with your finances. It's the same with your work. It's the same with people that you're involved with. And also what you have to remember, there's in the non-emotional contract, there's something called the um, the unwanted gift. So the unwanted gift is something I always say to my clients, if I was to give you a beautiful gift, 
that was like dressed up in like a beautiful Tiffany box and ribbon. But if I gave it to you and you knew that if you opened it, toxic smoke come into your nose and actually make you feel sick, would you accept it? Hmm. Usually the answer it was. Sometimes I get the answer, well, yeah, it, I would, but then I, I would put it down or, you know, the answer is no. So what that is, is if somebody's vile to you or horrible to you, you literally say, that's an unwanted gift. I'm not going to take that on. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's literally reprogramming your brain. There are other techniques in there. There's breathing techniques in there. There's there's a technique called, you know, what bag of rubbish are you going to pick up today? You know, because when all... you say in there, have you actually created something that people yes. can see? So this is a download. So it's a download of about, I don't know, six or seven steps or six or seven different techniques for your toolkit and what to do. Now, the key thing is, is with the non-emotional contract is you keep doing it. So not looking for things that, that, that you need to offload, but every night you just revisit and just say, right, okay, is this sorted? What am I concerned about? Is there anything that I want to do? Because people often just do it when they're stressed. But it's something that you need to do every night because actually it's a form of mindfulness. It helps you get rid of your sleep. It mentally offloads that emotional trash, empties your emotional trash. Yes. And, you know, it sets you up for the next day. It, do, it does sound like mindfulness. It also sounds a little bit like cognitive behavioral therapy, yeah. which is also very sort of logical, looking at things in a way dispassionately, yeah. you know, what what is this? What is that? Um, so and yes, it, it, and, and very effective. So wow, that's uh, that's quite an amazing thing you've created <laughs> here on top of everything else. Yeah, well, it's as I said, you know, the the tri effect is not just the physical; it's the mental and the emotional. So you know, you have to look at what things that you can control because often we take we do take on other people's monkeys because we think yeah. we can and we think that we yeah. can help them. But what you have to look is do a bit of housekeeping, and you think, hang on a minute. What's my own circus doing first before I invite other people's monkeys in my circus? And, and I think um, I think where the issue could become a little blurred and where it becomes hard, if, it, if it's someone very close to you, if it's a, a partner or a child and you think, well, can I, you know, and they're behaving in a certain way, can I do anything? And I think, you know, especially when it's a child, you think, yeah. oh, I can, I can, I'm, I'm their mother, of course, you know. So I think that's a hard one to say, well, actually, you know, if they're doing that. But that's where the non-emotional contract comes in, because you take out that aspect of mother, friend, sister, daughter. You have to literally step yourself out of it and you say, right, OK, so this is the issue. of the, Obviously, safety and love is the most paramount. Yeah. And as long as you're doing everything with love. But what you have to do is just look at it and say, well, what is the issue? Can I do something? What can I do? And then you literally write down whether it's, you know, right, spend time with that child, make sure that they're loved and safe and calm talk through what you need to do rather than saying, well, yeah, I can do that. And then you're feeling guilty because you haven't made time for that child or you haven't done this for that child. So when you factor that into your day and you say, right, okay, because it's a logical plan that you're doing and you're factoring it into your timetable of your day, even though it does seem very unemotional in that sense, when you're actually in it, you're there and you're present. Yes. And, you know, and I, I would think this would be very, very useful, actually, with families, you know, with one's extended family, because yeah. I think everybody has ha, have, has got people in their family that they feel they have to put up with because they're family, but who, yeah. who are actually very toxic people. And just because a person is your family doesn't make them necessarily a nice or a good person, does it? Absolutely <laughs> not. And this is where it's really important. I mean, I've actually said to members of my family, I've actually stopped and said, that's an unwanted gift. No, thank you. And it stops them in their trail. <laughs> what? 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 The what are you talking about? I'm not taking that on board. Uh, that is an unwanted gift I don't want. So I'll leave that with you. And it stops them in their tracks straight away. You know, but, you know, I had I had a client that, you know, was really stressing out. I mean, one of the things was financial thing was a financial thing. 
And, and she said, you know, all, I, all I've done, I've got a, a bin and it's stuffed full of all of these bills and all the rest of it. And I said, well, where do you keep the bin? She said, in my bedroom. I said, well, the first thing you need to do is get that out of your bedroom. I said, and then what you need to do yeah. is rather than feel overwhelmed, you take one piece at a time and we'll do a little page for each one and you see how you can do it logically rather than attaching fear and anxiety to that. You know? Wow. Well, I mean, it makes total sense. And I don't know how how far and why you share this, but do you are you prepared to share this with um, you know, absolutely. my I mean, subscribers? Absolutely. Listen, I, I'm all for sort of supporting people where I can. And so there is a free download on my I'm website. I'm going to put it in the article that goes with this video. So if, yeah, so that's great. Thank you so much. And if you just head to the Ageless website, there will be the article that goes with this. And I will put the link to the download there. And I'm going to try this myself because I think. Yeah, it's- no, absolutely. Honestly, I mean, it, they're just little tools. It's like there's there's a, another good friend of mine actually. She posted. Um, she's actually going through a journey of sobriety, and she's doing really, really well. Yeah. And she's, she's doing a daily vlog, and I had a look at checked in on to see how she is. And she was saying that you know, with the bad weather that we've had, yeah. and she was all dressed up in this like rain mac and saying how bad the weather makes her feel and blah blah blah. And I said, look, yeah. you've got to turn this around. Get your raincoat off. Go home. Turn the music on really loud and dance in the garden. And she said, are you mad? So I said, just do it. <laughs> and she videoed herself doing it. And she said, honestly, like after she said, honestly, it really ch- turned her mood around. So, you know, it's just changing your perspective on things. And you think about the rain washing all that negativity off of you. Yeah. You're charging yourself and you feel liberated. Amazing. Well, it is. It is true. I mean, you know, it, it does totally depend on how you look at things. Yeah. And some days you can see the bright side of a situation. And, and another day, that same situation will just seem so bleak. Yeah. It's so dependent on how you feel inside and how you feel inside, as you say, is how overwhelmed you feel, how stressed you feel. And the more anxious we are, it's impossible to be rational and logical yeah. when we're in fight or flight. And I think that's what happened to a lot of people during the pandemic. There was oh, so well, much actually, yeah, absolutely. around. So how do how could people make decisions about their health and do things? So being in a state of fear is never, never good. No, and don't forget, in in the pandemic, we were literally just shut in one place and fed all of this stuff that you think, oh, my God, what's happening? What's happening? And I think what you have to do is just stop in that moment. Just stop. Turn it all off. Turn it all off. Get out in in nature, ground, and understand as well. I always say that. Get out in nature, have a walk, keep moving. Yeah, if you can. Nature is so healing. It's just unbelievable. I mean, actually, I did that yesterday. I I was having a tough day yesterday where I felt very overwhelmed by a lot of things. And I was very aware that I was looking at things in a very negative way. You know, exactly that example. And I just took my little dog and I went for a walk. I really didn't feel like it, but I made myself. I mean, the dog didn't feel like it either. I made her and we walked and I was hugging trees and I was walking. And do you know, by the time I got back, I felt like a different person, you know, just well, you know, yeah, absolutely. myself the greenery and and I felt it's, it's I, I could see things differently when I got but even people that can't get out. There are things that I mean, there's an amazing uh, website called groundology.co.uk where you can get grounding sheets and you can even get these little prongs that you put in house plants and put on your wrists so if you're in a flat if there's nowhere where you've got a garden you can still ground in other ways there are still other ways that you can ground I've Um, just got myself some grounding trainers which I did a post about on Instagram it's brilliant so trainers that you you walk it because you know how do you ground in London it's not easy or in the city it's not easy at all and these are trainers that you wear and you ground right through them so uh yeah fantastic that's fine and you know there's other things that you can do i mean you know even i mean i'm really into my foraging i've got like obviously here i'm i forage and do all sorts of things you know nettle tea and calendula and and you know elderflower i've just done a big bumper crop of of uh, elderflower i make my own tinctures i make my own teas and you know why does this not surprise me (laughs) i know i've even got a witch's hat someone bought me a little witch's hat they called me the witch of the woods up here they're like (laughs) Um, but honest to God, it's just so amazing. Like even like ginkgo biloba or St. John's Wall lift your mood. Yeah, and I would yeah. say, 
there's no point in sitting indoors staring at a brolly waiting for it to rain when it's beautiful sunshine outside so that's like an analogy yeah, yeah, yeah. try and just change your thought processes and also remember that organs have emotions so like fear and anxiety again comes back to the kidneys motivation you know when your lack of motivation that comes back to the spleen you know and there's certain foods that the spleen doesn't like especially menopausal women and that's like damp cold foods and what do we eat a lot salads and cold vegetables and things like that smoothies the worst thing you can do so you need warming foods and turmeric and lovely spices so all of these things affect your mood that's very interesting yes well as ever that was so insightful and interesting and i can't wait to to see this myself and uh, and give it a go thank you thank you so much for sharing that with us never a problem always a pleasure Thank you.